I can't tell the story is hilarious or heartbreaking. I think you'll decide. Uh, <laughs> There's a pastor in Colorado that scammed his congregation out of $3.2 million. No, it's a heartwarming story. It was, uh, it was all for crypto. He made a coin. He made a coin and he passed it off to his congregation saying that the Lord wanted to bless them. And then they invested. And then he's now been caught and is being charged with fraud. Um, and he pocketed 1.3 million of the 3.2 million. And so he came out and he made a video and in the apology video, he is very honest. He's like, listen, the Lord spoke to my wife and I and said to, you know, make this coin and everything. And I even said, I even said to God, he, I like how he acts like God is a guy, just like, and that he's a guy that he can't get on the phone right now, but was talking wild a couple weeks ago. And so it's like, and then look, I was even asking God, I was, you know, cause I'm not even omniscient like God is. I'm not over here like God. And I even asked, I was like, where's the liquidity gonna come from? And, and honestly, if your pastor ever says liquidity to you, <laughs> that should be the first sign to run. <laughs> run as fast as you can, as far away as possible. And so he's like, I even asked God, where's the liquidity going to come from? You know, and God said, trust me. <laughs> and so then I immediately told you it would be fine. Uh, <laughs> That's my bad. And I want you to know, out of that 1.3 million that my wife and I pocketed, 500,000 went to the IRS, which is a meaningless detail, by the way. Like, yes, you paid your taxes, but that's just a weird thing that the pastor did to be like, hey, look, while we're being honest, I got fucked too, okay? <laughs> IRS really get everybody, don't they? <laughs> it's like, as much as we hate the IRS, you're not gonna flip this around on them right now. And then he got caught and he's like, you know, yes, we did spend it on some trips and, and, a, and a home renovation that the Lord told us to do. And <laughs> I'm starting to think that Lord is just some guy's last name to him. <laughs> just a Marcus Lord that does a lot of cocaine. It's like, I got a new coin. <laughs> you should tell your peeps, you should get them in on it. Because I've, I've, read, I've read a good portion of the, of the Bible. And, it, and I don't know. No, like, I'm not saying I'm smarter than everyone that was in the congregation. <laughs> I'm expressly not saying that. Like, but it is a thing where it's like, if you read the Bible, it, what he's saying will be weird. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> If you read the Bible and you have a general understanding of it, when a guy comes to you and he's like, listen, the Lord about them gains, okay? <laughs> I think it makes it easier for you to be like, oh, I think this guy is full of shit. I... Oh. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> but that, that's, a, that's a scary thing, though, is that, like, the... There's a blurred line now, blurred almost to the point of being indistinguishable between like pastors and influencers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like a pastor used to be, at least where I come from, a, a pastor used to at least be poor. <laughs> you know what I mean? When a pastor is poor, they're very easy to believe. Cause you see how poor they are and they're like, oh, you really about that life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it, like a, a poor pastor is like a, it's like a gang member that has been shot a few times where you can like, <laughs> you can see the lumps and you're like, oh, you really dangerous. Okay. <laughs> a pastor that's poor makes a more convincing argument. 
Because even when you try to check their work, you're like, if nothing else, even if they are absolutely out of their mind, they at least believe this because they're willing to dedicate their whole life to and to it exactly, to it only, right? To whatever mission they feel like God has led them to, they're willing to focus solely on that to the point of being completely removed from the world, right? So any worldly thing doesn't affect them. They have no interest in it. They're only focused on whatever the thing is. Maybe it's helping people. Maybe it's spreading the word. Maybe, you know, maybe it's knocking on doors at 6 a.m. Or like, you know, what, <laughs> whatever they feel led to do. And then a rich pastor tells, like a rich pastor has a more al alluring <laughs> argument. Because a rich pastor rolls up in a Rolls Royce in a $10,000 suit with a $200,000 watch and a pinky ring. Like, <laughs> the amount of pastors dressing like pimps needs to be talked about. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like there's too, there's too many wires crossing with, like I'll see a pastor dressed like, fully like Don Bishop Juan. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, yes, you are pimping your congregation. Like, I get, like, yes, I get it. Wow. And in their faces, too, you're brazen with it because you dress rich in front of them and they're poor to make you rich. And wow, that is, that is ballsy. Maybe you do have God's protection. I, <laughs> that's crazy that you're going to do that in their face. And then you tell them what you buy. If you see these televangelists, they tell the people, they tell the people what they bought with the money that they said was going to missions and to... Because when the plate is getting passed around, it's so that we can help the poor and that we can spread the word and that we can, you know, sort of build up the, the church to have things for you as a community. One of the only reasons to have church is for a community. Just... Even, it doesn't even have to be fully like-minded people. It could just be people that you feel like safe and in communion with. And so, yes, sometimes everybody pulls their money together and then they're like, you know what would be great is a, a rec center for the kids. And then a church will put all their money into building a building that could be a rec center for the kids so that they don't get in trouble. There are lots of things and ways that, that churches spend money that I do think are good. And so when I see like a, a mega church's facilities, I'm not immediately skeptical. It's when I see the person and he's, and he's dressed so much like a pimp. Like I cannot <laughs> stress this enough. It is full pimp outfit. Like it's to the point of tacky. Like we're not even talking about just cause he has a suit. I'm talking about, he has like, they are all stopping short of a cane. Like every, <laughs> they're millionaires in your face and they're telling you, I have all this stuff because you know, cause God, God bless me with this jet. I purchased this jet for the Lord. <laughs> so I could fly from place to place quicker, spreading the message. And I would even believe that if we didn't have Zoom. If, if, <laughs> if Zoom was not a thing, I would get a pastor being like, I have to get over there to spread the word as quickly as possible. They don't know, they have no idea. And it's not like we can send them a telegram or something. <laughs> It's not like there's been iterations of communication for decades that would negate me buying a jet to fly it to, I'm not gonna tell you where. <laughs> like, how did we get here? And, and look, it is, it is probably, it's probably an easy thing to have happen. It is, it's probably, I think that there's, I'm trying to be gracious for a second. I really am. I'm trying to extend an olive branch for a second and just, no, 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 just hear me out. <laughs> I do think, I do think that there's something that speaks 
to these pastors. But I think what has happened is that they have mistaken God for their intrusive thoughts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I don't know all of you, I don't know, you know, exactly what your lives are like. I don't know if you grew up with religious or not, or what religion or anything. I'm just saying as, as, as individuals, every single one of us here, if we were to lead a congregation and we were to pass around a jar or a plate, collection plate, any, anything like that, and everybody gave something because we made a compelling case that it is your job as a, as a citizen of the world to help people that you may never meet, right? Is your, is your actual duty as a, as a living, breathing, empathetic individual that you have to do something if someone somewhere is hurting, you don't need to know them and you don't need to know why they got there. That's not your business. It's important to help someone. And then the plate gets passed around and you make such a compelling argument that everybody puts, you know, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, or like the Bible says, a tenth of their income to help the poor. <laughs> and then church is over. Everybody leaves, and then you go to the back office where they have piled up all the money, and you do look at it and go, nigga, we rich. <laughs> I mean, wow. Oh, we really cooking right now. Oh, man, I get the pinky with the soup. Oh. I'm not gonna get the cane, that's too much, but oh. oh, oh. Just looking at a pile of money, a pile of envelopes with a tenth of someone's paycheck in order for them to either like spread the word of God or help people that they will never meet. Build a well, do something. Do something so it matters that we were here, right? And then you see the money and it's, it's stacked pretty high. Cause it's a big church. And you look at all that money and you, it's hard not to be like, game time? Like, Oh, um, that's a tough thing. I, you know, a friend said to me today, because I was telling him about the story, and he said to me that if, if churches did what they were supposed to do, we might not have much homelessness. I mean, like, like if churches were really about it, in a compelling way, in a way that was genuinely uncomfortable. <laughs> in a way that was like, I'm gonna tell you a story and you don't, you, you're gonna judge me, but it's fine. I was at a, a theater when I first moved to Chicago. And when I first moved to Chicago, I didn't have any money, right? And I especially, did not have much to spare, but I was at a show and I was at that show because it was free. So it was a, a free midnight show that I loved so much. I made sure to go there every Thursday night because I knew it was a free show. I could do something. I could meet other comics. I could, you know, learn by watching them and everything because everyone on the show was incredibly funny. It's actually a sketch show, ironically enough. And there was a person that came in and... um she came in and she clearly had nothing, right? Her, her clothes were torn and everything. Her hair was a little messed up and she had a little bit of a limp. And she was asking people for change. And you gotta remember, this is like a kind of swanky place. Like it has a, it has a little bit of that underground grunge feel to it, but it's also like a nice place with a nice bar and everything. And so everybody was like, no, 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 no. And everyone was uh, varying degrees of like just ignoring, politely saying no, being aggressive, get out of here sort of thing. And then, and then someone came and they asked her to leave, right? And so I, I see all that happen. I'm sort of sitting in the, in the back towards where the showroom is. And then this was all happening towards the front. They, she didn't get far in. I go, I watch the show. And I'll be honest, I didn't really think about her while I was watching the show. I was thinking about what an incredible show this was, how thankful I was that it was free and everything. And then the show lets out. And I guess because a couple hours had passed, she gave it another try. So she came in 
She was asking people for change. And once again, it was varying degrees of not looking at her, asking her to leave them alone and everything, politely saying no. And so then I had uh, about like uh, $3 in my pocket. And so I, I saw her the second time and I felt so bad about how the first time went and that I didn't do anything that I went ahead and I gave her the $3. And when I gave her the $3, um, she, she, she took it and she looked at me and she said, oh, thank you so much. And then she, ju- like she jumped and hugged me and hugged me tight. And what should have been a, a sweet moment <laughs> was mainly just me being like, oh my God, 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 oh, oh, oh. And then she walked off, happy as could be, walked out of the venue. And then I was like, I gotta wash my hands, I gotta wash my hands, I gotta wash my hands, I gotta wash my hands. <laughs> and, I, and I think that, you know, I, I look back at that and I'm not proud of that. I'm not, I'm not proud of how I reacted or anything, but that does feel like what church should feel like. <laughs> like, it, instead of just being boring, it should be... <laughs> Like, oh my God, oh wow, everybody really is welcome, oh, oh jeez, all right, cool.